Should you buy Rome 1 Total War? Yes, if you don't mind older games, you definitely should buy Rome 1 Total War. It is pretty much the most fun I've ever had in a Total War game. It is old, and the graphics are outdated, but I think they still look, look pretty good, and in a strategy game, the most important thing is the gameplay, and the strategies, and so on, not the graphics. Still, I think they look pretty decent. Also, the game is very historically accurate, well, at least compared to other games. For example, as the Romans, you don't start with Roman legions. You actually start with the old-type Roman army, which is the Velites, the Hastadi, the Prince, um, Principes, prin, prin, Principes, and the Triarii, which differ. And then you get, uh, historically, the reform, and you can change. Uh, I have prepared a quick custom battle to show you some... Some types of units. Oh, we're about to get attacked by Carthaginian war elephants. Let's let them run into our troops. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, I'm not going to prepare for this. This is a custom battle with tons and tons of enemies. Okay, our archers are already firing. And here come the elephants. Oh, they didn't charge because of the building. Doesn't this look cool? <laughs> Just throwing these guys around and... They have their individual animations and all that. So it is a semi-modern game, I'd say, I'd say. It is definitely more modern than Medieval Total War 1, which was very much... Uh, which was almost 2D, uh, even in battles. Although it is not as modern as the current Total War games, like uh, Total War Warhammer 2 that recently came out. Still... Um, yeah, you'll see some stuttering here, but that's because it's somehow incompatible with my recording software. I'm not sure why. Still, as you can see, it is um, the battles are happening. Now the game ha has its faults. It, but I think it is it has aged very well. Let's use these incendiary pigs on the enemy elephants, even though they're running away. Let's use these war. Maybe we shouldn't use these warhounds. Let's shoot this onager. Because I want to see it shoot a flaming missile. Anyway. Yeah, there's animal cruelty because of incendiary pigs. I'm not sure how historically accurate that is. But um, in general, yeah, I'm speeding this up. This is going to be stuttering a little bit more. Still not sure why that happens with my recording software. Okay. But let's get back to the topic at hand. The battles are fun. And the game is simple to learn, but not so simple to master, which I think is great. Because in the newer Total War games, you kind of have to figure quite a lot of stuff out. Let's go to the campaign map so I can show you one more thing. Also, it's very thematic. The music is wonderful and the voice acting is pretty good. Um, yeah, I really, really like uh, this game's music. As for the campaign, it is simpler... Let's just continue a campaign I was playing. Well, it was... Oh, it was the Greek cities. Must have been a while ago. Um, yeah, so... The campaign is much simpler to manage than the newer Total War games. Because there's less stuff to figure out. Hear the music. That's pretty nice, isn't it? So, it's much easier to figure out. The building browser is simpler. And there is no province system, it's just city by city. And that seems simple, but optimizing your, your build is not that simple. Because, for example, um, you'll have to build quite a lot of buildings to actually get the units you want. And as for the units, one thing, there's two things I, I think... The old Total War games like Rome 1 do much better than the newer Total War games like Warhammer Total War, for example. And that is unit replenishment. I think this decision was made to make the player's life easier. But it dumped the game down a bit. Because in here, for example, I can only recruit my best units in the city I've built up properly. I can't just conquer a city and recruit Spartans there, which is just as it is in... Um, you know, the games, uh, the other newer Total War games. But, in the newer Total War games, you can just build an amazingly powerful army. 
You can just build an amazingly powerful army and have it replenish. So you can bring your, you know, army full of dragon riders or whatever uh, through the whole map and then stop for a bit, they'll replenish, they'll get reinforcements and you're good to go. In here there is no such mechanic. So you have to pay attention to losses and to preventing losses in combat. You have to play a little bit defensively because even if you win, if you lose too many troops, you will lose your momentum in your campaign. You'll have to wait to replenish them because you can't, you can't replenish troops unless you have an advanced building in the new city that you're in. For example, if I were to build super advanced troops in Sparta, like Armored Hoplites, this is an early in the campaign, so we don't have Spartan troops yet. Uh, then I couldn't replenish them on the way. I'd have to save them up on, or start replacing them with uh, more basic units or mercenaries. Like here, this army, I can click it out. This army mostly has militia, because that's all that I could recruit here. And I think that adds a strategic layer to your planning. So even though the settlement management and the army management systems are theoretically more simple, uh, the strategy that you have to, you know, follow and devise and follow uh, might be a bit more complicated. Another thing, another thing is, um, well, basically, the AI is not that great in this game, but you can just uh, increase the difficulty if it's too easy for you. Let's, let's, um, there's one more thing I want to tell you about. I can't attack. In... The more modern Total War games like uh, Warhammer 2, which I've been playing recently, all your units just magically get ladders and they can climb on the walls, which makes walls virtually useless. Here I actually have to spend a turn preparing the siege. If I don't have siege weapons with me, and holding siege weapons with me slows down my army on the campaign map. So again, another strategic decision to make. Okay, I think we should move on to conclusions. Basically, if you don't mind an older game, although I don't, I think it holds up well, even though it's an older one, I think the graphics aren't worse than Civ 5 or Civ 6, that, that aren't that much worse. And do graphics really matter that much in a strategy game? So if you don't mind older games, and maybe a more simple premise and management rules, then this is a great game to have. Uh, the, the price is, the basic price is $10, or the original equivalent. Uh, it is very often discounted to two and a half, and it was even once discounted to $1. So, it, if you th just think you might be interested, there's really no reason not to pick it up. It has quite a bit of historical accuracy. I mean, obviously it's not perfect, but um, yeah, you have, you know, Carthaginian elephants, and proper Roman units, and so on. Greek phalanx. Uh, the game has its problems. The AI on the battle map can sometimes be stupid and can be exploited. And, you know, it's a bit dated, the interface might not be perfect, and so on, and so on, and so forth. But, this is definitely the most fun I have ever had in a Total War game. Up till today, even though there's these new ones coming out. They they never gave me as much enjoyment as this old little game. And the music's amazing as well. So I thoroughly recommend that you buy Rome 1 Total War if you don't mind older games. That's it. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.